What's up, YouTube? It's your boy. I'm everyone's boy, the TK Moss. Today on the TK Moss show, for the first time ever, I have on a, the professional women's soccer player in which she's arguably the greatest Northern Colorado women's soccer player of all time. She played for Team USA 23 and under team. Give it up for Adrian Jordan. Here you go. Are you that? No, I think we're kind of lagging out here. Are you, are you, are you, did you get that? Yeah, I got that. Okay. <laughs> so, I've never done this before. <laughs> so, uh, how, how's it going? Yeah, no, it's going really great. We just got back from a small little break in our season. So we're starting to get back into the swing of things a little bit. Yeah, I know you, I, I know you have some, um, some downtime. So have you been watching the world cup? Have you been able to keep up with that? Yeah, um, I've watched almost every single game. Unfortunately, I've missed a couple because of our own training sessions, but the ones I'm really interested in, I've watched. Yeah, um, yeah have, you, have you been able to um, – I know I, I, I just got finished watching this Mexico and Germany game, so did you enjoy that? Uh, I have to say, I'm my mom's from Germany. I'm a big Germany fan, so I'm really, really disappointed with the results. Um, I'm hoping that Germany can – get back into the swing of things. It looks like they're a little bit off with their organization and just not really having any real desire, I guess, to win. Um, props to Mexico, though. They did really well to finish out the game and get those three points. Yeah, I was really, really shocked because I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, four years ago, wasn't Germany world champions? Yep, that's correct. <laughs> Yeah, so I was I was shocked they didn't they didn't score nothing, but hopefully hopefully they're able to bring it together. But like you said before, um, you're you're right now. Are 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 you still in Iceland? Because I know you don't you play for the um Icelandic team. I actually I am playing for a team in Iceland. Okay. It's also yeah. A lot of times people get confused. I don't actually I don't play for the national team. Yeah. Um, when it comes to national team stuff, you have to be either have citizenship there before like. You have to be a citizen of the country. So the only countries I can play for nationally are the U.S. and for Germany um, because I have dual citizenship. Mm -hmm. So in Iceland, I actually play in the Pepsi League, which is the first uh, first division, the best league, I guess you could say, in Iceland. Um, and we just played other teams in the Pepsi League. Um, those are our league games. And then we also play cup games, which is more – like a round robin tournament type of thing. Um, it includes all the teams, all women's team in Iceland, and it, yeah. <laughs> and I know, um, but um, in 2017, didn't didn't you guys like win a championship? Yeah, that's the Icelandic Cup. So right, yeah, that, the cup, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're basically uh, the number one team in Iceland, um, based off of that. But then there is also a league champion. Who goes on to play in the Champions League for the women? Yeah, I don't know because I, I was I was reading your blog and you guys you guys were down two to zero and you guys came back. That was pretty mm -hmm. impressive. Yeah, 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 it was a it was a really interesting game. Um, that was my first time playing in a stadium like that um, with so many fans and just so much on the line. Um, it was a really big deal for my teammates who had played there in the previous years because in 2016 they actually made it to the same. Uh, round to the final and lost. Um, so they ended up coming in second. So it was a, a really big deal for them to come out with that win. Yeah, and I know in, in any profession, it, it doesn't matter if you're in college, high school, to be down 2-0 to zero and come back, it says a lot about your team. Mm -hmm. It sure does. Um, we actually, it was like, it was an interesting game because we went up uh, in the first half. We scored first. So we were up 1-0, then we went down 2-1, to one, which is actually, like, that's the hardest score when it comes to soccer, um, okay. when you're ahead, because uh, it's, it's a one-goal game. Like, you let one goal in, and they're tied up again. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and then it comes up at that point, like, whoever scores next, like, they, you either put away the game and go up 3-1, to one, or the other team scores, and they tie it back up. And, like, in our situation, we tied it back up, and then we scored again in overtime. And it was it was nerve-wracking for sure. And there's just so many emotions and just it, – it means a lot for the team I play for because 
we actually were off the coast of Iceland. So it's a very small community living on the smaller ice islands. Right. Um, so like for us, it was just like, it was huge. The men's team had won the cup a few weeks before that. Right. Um, and then like, I don't know. It, it was just like, it was big for the whole island basically. So it was just something really great to be a part of. Yeah, and, and before we go any further, I know you had a great career in uh, Northern Colorado. Could you talk more about your um your time there? Oh yeah, I I love Northern Colorado. Um, Tim and Simone, uh, the head coach and assistant coach there, when I was playing, um, I I enjoyed playing for them a lot. Like I owe a lot of my successes to them. Um, it was Tim who actually was talking. <sighs> I, I don't know. It was just, it was a really great four years. And, you know, like I, I didn't think that I was going to play in college. Um, really? Yeah. When I was a, it's a lot of backstory, but I honestly, um, I was told by one of the local schools, a D1 school that I should be looking at D2 schools. Like I wasn't good enough to play at a D1 level. Mm -hmm. Um, so obviously that was a confidence, a blow to my confidence. Um, so then when UNC came around um, and offered me a scholarship, it was something that, I don't know, I didn't know what to expect going into it as a freshman. A lot of people said, like, don't expect playing time, expect a red shirt, um, things along that line. And I went in and I was a starter very early in the season, and I was a starter for the rest of my career at UNC, um, aside from my sophomore year when I was out with an injury for a majority of the season so and then that's that's kind of surprising that um that scout would say that about you because in high school didn't you go to state for track and swimming so you was like super athletic already yeah yeah yeah. that's that's correct um i did i did go to state in those sports um yeah it was just something i, I think the the coach for that particular school came to one game and it just goes to show how like one poorly played game or like if you don't play your best like one time like it it could be a make or break point so consistency is definitely key um i remember the game she came to i didn't play great i didn't play poorly but it was just kind of average so and it was also a little unfair to be judged off of one game but that's yeah. how it is in this lifestyle you know as an athlete and like trying to get recruited by colleges it's a lot of pressure sometimes so and then at Northern Colorado, um, what what was your major? Um, I double majored. Uh, I studied sports and exercise science and German. Wow, that's pretty impressive. I, that wow, because to major to double major and you was playing sports, you must have you must have been so busy. Yes, yes, it was a very busy schedule, but fortunately. In high school, I was an IB, so I got a, okay. quite a few college credits. Um, that helped me with my German major. I like I skipped a few classes, and that put me ahead. So that helped. I also was able to skip a few science classes, so that helped. Um, I don't think I could have done it without those college credits I got in high school for sure. And then also, um, um, maybe, um, maybe before Northern Colorado, did did you did you always want to um um play um college soccer, or or did anyone inspire you to to be a soccer player? I I remember um, in elementary school, I actually have a picture um, for one of our. It was like a little musical performance or something like that. We we're supposed to dress up as what we wanted to be when we grow up. And I dressed up as a professional soccer player. Like, I wanted to be a soccer player. Um, and that's just something that, like, as a child, like, everyone, almost everyone wants to be a professional athlete. That's just something that one wants to do. Uh, as I got older, I definitely think that dream died. Like, I didn't think I was going to play in college. I definitely didn't think I was going to play professionally anywhere. But, um, yeah. Uh, Tim and Simone like really giving me a chance to play at a college level. Um, I I really developed when I was there. Um, I it was kind of it was just kind of like something clicked. Um, after my sophomore year, I went through um, a really tough time because I was out 
for a majority of the season. Yeah. What was, really, it, was it like a knee injury or something? Or It was an injury. Okay. Um, yeah, I sprained my ankle in the very first game of the season um, to the point where I should have redshirted, but I didn't. Okay. <laughs> Being that young, young, um, I want to say naive, but also like very passionate athlete that I am, I've grown a little bit more. I've gotten smarter and listened to my body more with age. But at the time, it was um, just that I wanted to play. I wanted to be with my team. I felt like I had been out of the game for so long. Um, my sophomore year, definitely, it wasn't my best showing. In the games I did play, my <laughs> ankle was wrapped so much, it was basically like a cast when I was on the field. Um, but having to sit and then like come back from that my junior year was definitely my breakout year i would have to say it was like something just clicked when i was on the field and it was there's so much just flow and it was nice <laughs> it was it was a nice feeling to have just like everything fall into place on the field and feel so comfortable yeah and, and that that just shows your competitive your competitiveness because to to maybe to want to play even with injury and all that just shows that you really love the sport and you really care about your teammates mm -hmm. yes agreed and then also during your time there um i believe it was 2016 you guys made the um ncaa tournament for the first time ever so i know that must have been so cool for you guys yeah yeah my senior season um it, it was a really big deal for my class uh, for the whole four years we were there. Uh, with every season, we said, okay, this is the season we're going to win the tournament. We're going to go to the NCAA tournament. We're going to do this thing. Um, every year, we just we kind of just fell short of uh, getting to the Big Sky tournament or getting to the final, the Big Sky tournament, whatever it was. It, it would just, it never worked for us. Um, so my senior season in uh, 2015, uh, in November, like I feel like I remember it like it was yesterday. It was just like so memorable, winning the tournament, uh, the Big Sky tournament in PKs to go on to the the uh, NCAA tournament for the very first time. It was just like such such a relief almost because that was our last chance as a group mm -hmm. um, of girls had medical red shirts from knee injuries um so they they had another year they had a fifth year but for the rest of us like that was it so we definitely ended on a high note for us and i think that's something my class as a whole we're gonna remember forever <laughs> yeah especially going to going into the tournament for the first time like nobody can ever take that away from you guys even even if you guys lost first round or whatever you guys were the first and I, I, don't, I don't know if you guys have you have Northern Colorado been back to the tournament since or no? Um, I do not believe so. They they have made it to the Big Sky tournament, but they have not made it to the NCAA tournament again. So okay. And I know um after you graduated, didn't you go? Um, uh, I, I believe I don't know if this is the um, right name, but isn't it called the NWSL? That was the first league, first professional league you came into, right? Yeah, the NWSL is the Women's Professional League in the U.S. Um, I was drafted by the Chicago Red Stars, um, which was also, I, like, I wasn't aware of this before, but I guess I was the first player from my conference and from my school and from my hometown to be drafted into the NWSL. So that was a news to me. I was shocked <laughs> when I found that out. But, yeah, it was just and really and when you, when you got drafted and when you found out all that, was was there like like all this weight on your shoulders that like you had to maybe prove something? Or like how, did, how did you feel when you knew all this stuff? I definitely, it was at first, the feeling was just disbelief. Like, it, I, I didn't think it was real. But then shortly after, <laughs> um, it was just immense amounts of pressure to figure everything out because this was still in January of 2016. Like I hadn't graduated college yet. So I had to figure out how I was gonna graduate, um, how I was gonna move out to Chicago for preseason um, and how I was gonna prepare myself best to make the team or at least set myself up the best I could to make the team. 
Yeah, and um, I um, I know it must have been tough, I, but well, I, I bet your parents are happy for you. No, no matter what, because that's pretty to play professional in any sports. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, I definitely I strive to make my parents, my family proud. Um, I hope they are. I think they are. Um, but yeah, I just uh, I do what I love every day, and there's there's nothing more that I could ask for. You know, it's just yeah. living my dream. <laughs> And then, could you could you tell us more about the um the U.S. twenty three under women's under team? Because that's that's pretty impressive. I don't know how that works or anything like that. With I honestly I <laughs> I still don't have uh, that much knowledge on that matter. Okay. Um, that was another one of those surprises, just like being drafted. Um, I I just was preparing for my first season in Iceland. Um, working out almost every single day at a sports specific, specific facility in my hometown. Um, and right before one of the training sessions, I opened my email and there's an email in there from US soccer. Hmm. And I opened it like not, I, I had signed up to be a coach. And so I had taken a few US soccer based coaching classes. So I thought it was something with that. But when I was reading the email, it said that I had been invited to U23 camp um, in Spain. It was a like kind of like friendly tournament base. There's nothing, no prize. It wasn't okay. a qualification or anything like that. It was just kind of like a camp. And so like I was shook, honestly. Like I was just like, is this real? Like I showed one of my good friends who I've known since we were like, in elementary school. We played together growing up. We played together in college. Um, so like I showed her, I was like, dude, like, is this real right now? Like, is this, is this real? And she read it and she, she was in disbelief. She's like, you have to call your coach because it was during my preseason in Iceland. I would have to leave for a little over a week, I think, uh, to go to Spain. And I, I called him up and I, I told him, like, hey, I, I, I think I got a U23 US national team call up. Um, I don't know what to do from here. <laughs> and uh, I mean, he was like, well, you go. And I'm uh, like, I'm okay with it. Um, it's gonna be a great experience. I let my agent know that this mm -hmm. was happening. And then I, I wrote a reply email. I forwarded the email to my parents. <laughs> um, so it, it was just, uh, it was a it was a good thing for sure. And then while we're on the topic of U, um U.S. women's team, how I always always want to ask a professional soccer player this, as a especially a woman, how come the U.S. women, even though they they're way better than the men, they get paid way less than the men, even though they're better. I don't. Could you could you help me understand that? Because that's that that always like I can never wrap my head around that. That is something that a lot you can ask any female professional athlete it is something that we don't understand because it's not only soccer it's basketball it's softball and it's then, whatever sport and, yeah and then yes I, I i interviewed a professional basketball player before you named christina king and when she's a she's a great um basketball player and i was kind of yeah. asking her the same thing about the WNBA. how come the WNBA women players even though that's the, supposed to be the highest league they're on tv and everything they, I, they get paid way less than the men. And I know some people say maybe it's ratings, but still, if they, if that's the best, the, the WNBA is supposed to be the best of the best, and they, you know, they don't get paid like, they don't, they, they pay, they get paid like really nothing compared to NBA players. Yeah. I, it's, it's hard to say, honestly. Um, it's like that in Europe as well. A lot of the, professional teams in Europe for the women's side, the women are going to school or have day jobs or like any, they have some kind of income outside of their professional sport that also pays them because they need to pay the bills essentially, mm -hmm. have food on the table and they don't get that if they were to just play soccer. And then, like, what do you think needs to happen for you guys to get paid more? Do you think it needs to be more exposure or uh, maybe more TV deals? Like, because I, I, I really just want to help and un try to understand some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's a mix of everything. 
Honestly, I know with the U.S. women's national team, they've they've spoken up. A lot of the other national teams have also spoken up. Um, in Iceland, in general, outside of the sporting world, they're the, one of the first countries, if not the first country, to have equal pay, I think. Um, I think it's just something where it needs to be known and like people need to be willing to do something about it. I think a lot of people are aware of it and maybe just – turn their heads or like pretend like they don't know it. I don't know, but it's something I've seen in the U S in Sweden. When I played there here, it's, it's everywhere in Germany. Like at the end, I, I don't, I have nothing more to say. I can only say like, that's just the way it is, but. Yeah. And it's a shame, but I mean, only, only thing I can uh, maybe guess is maybe more, maybe um, a lot more sponsors, maybe TV deals. But that's probably that's that's what I have to say to that as well, because I I really don't understand. Yeah, but it's it's tough. <laughs> yeah, but um, with soccer, did you did you um um did you want to um other than soccer? If say if you didn't get this um if you wasn't a professional soccer player, would you be doing something in in, in foreign language or um, exercise science? I have no idea, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> um, yeah, before anything happened with the Red Stars, before I was drafted, um, I had tentative plans. Like I wanted to go to Germany and try to play there but everything's mm -hmm. very far out of my reach. And I didn't really have a backup plan. Like my, my plan was to save up as much money as I could to get out to Germany to do some trials there and hopefully maybe make a team. Um, but if none of that would have worked out, I, I don't know. I'd like to think that I would have tried everything I could to play but at the end of the day, if absolutely nothing worked out, I would probably have to go back to school <laughs> or like do something really? like that. Yeah. I don't know. It's a hard question. I'm just uh, happy to think about it anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, and I'm just happy you're getting paid and you're getting as much money as you can. So that's as long as you're living a dream, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay with it too. <laughs> yeah, and before we um head out, is it – could? If a, if, a, if a somebody's watching, I mean, wants to be a professional soccer player, could you give them maybe uh, three tips that they need to do to get to your level? Yes. I think, um, I think one of the biggest things I could say is uh, it doesn't matter how old you are. You can always learn new things. Um, basically, to always be a student of the game. Like, no matter how much you think you know, like, there's more to know. And to learn these things, you kind of, I like to use, a, it's a quote from a book that I read. I want to say it's Mind Gym. It's a very good book for any athletes out there. Um, but there's a quote in that about emptying your cup. And it basically gives the visual, if you have a cup in front of you and it's full, you can't pour anything into it. So you have to mm. empty it pour more into it you know so i like that i like that yeah yeah that's something i always try to remind myself like if my coach says something and i'm like mm, that's not what i was taught like way back when but then i'm like all right empty your cup this is like this is what you have to do now um so that's there's that always be a student of the game um take the time that you have to work on technical skills um if you really want to get to the professional level of playing soccer you have to have that technical side the basics um down that's something that i think i missed out on growing up a little bit um it's something i'm working on now so it's never too late to work on and to keep fresh um and then just just work hard you know there's a quote out there that says um hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard and that's so true i mean we saw it today, kind of, yep. with the with, team, with Germany. A team full of talented players. And to me, it just looked like they didn't really work that hard, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's just something. Yeah. And then is it any, um, like, is it anything you want to plug, like your social medias or uh, maybe Twitter or anything like that for the public? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I think Instagram, it's AD underscore Jordan 15. Fair to be positive. We can just go with that. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then I, I'll have I'll have that in the description below. And I just yeah. want to I want to say just thank you for coming on. And I know this morning some things didn't work out, and I've been trying to get this interview for like a couple of weeks. But I just want to say thank you for for yeah. for coming on. Yeah, no, thank you for having me and taking the time. I know I, I've I've been a little bit busy as well, so it's my yeah, fault. I understand. I understand. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate and, it a lot. And also, can can you stay on um while in the broadcast so I can thank you uh, off air as well? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, guys, there you have it. Adrian Jordan, a, a great professional soccer player, very intelligent, very hardworking guys. Until then, you never know who's who's next I will have on. So peace out, guys. <laughs>